For this video, we're going to have a look at completing the displacement diagram for a cam, which is going to complete one full revolution and which is going to include simple harmonic motion. That is the main focus for this video, is our simple harmonic motion. So we're going to start off by having a look at how to start the displacement diagram with five simple steps. Okay, there are five simple steps. The first thing that we're going to do with the question is we're going to check the horizontal scale that's been given to us. So if we have a look at the question, you can see here there's an explanation of the movement, but the information we're looking for is below that over here. And you'll see that the first bullet point says a displacement graph with a horizontal scale of 4 millimeters equals 20 degrees. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the horizontal scale, which is 4 millimeters equals 20 degrees. So if that's our horizontal scale, for step 2 over there, we now need to use the horizontal scale to work out the length of our baseline. So... If we need to complete one full revolution of a cam, one full revolution, of course, is 360 degrees. So to work out the length of our baseline, we're going to take 360 degrees and we're going to divide it by 20 degrees. And that's because they've told us over here in our question that we're using a scale of 4 millimeters equals 20 degrees. Okay, and that little calculation gives us a total of 18. And then to work out the full length of the base, we're going to take that answer of 18 and multiply it by 4 millimeters, which gives us 72 millimeters for the length of our baseline. Okay, now we've worked out the length of our baseline. Our next step, step number three there says just draw the baseline. Okay, so we're going to go and draw our baseline in. And we'll draw the baseline in over there, first in construction, and then we're going to measure it out to be 72 millimeters. Okay, and mark that off. Then we can draw in our baseline properly. Okay, so that's our baseline now of 72 millimeters, according to our question. Okay, with our scale of 4 millimeters equaling 20 degrees. Then for our next step, okay, we've drawn our baseline. Now we're going to have a look at step four, which tells us to go and break the baseline up according to the given horizontal scale. So our horizontal scale was four millimeters equals 20 degrees. So we're going to take our baseline now and with a ruler, we're simply going to go and mark off points at every four millimeters. So if you just bear with me, we're going to go through this. And every four millimeters, we're simply just going to go and mark off a point. Make sure that you do this as accurately as possible. And make sure that you can see the points, but even but when you can, while you're doing it, make sure that you can see the points, but try not to make those points too dark, because you don't want that to give you a very sloppy looking displacement diagram. Okay, so we've gone and completed our step four. And then step five at the bottom here says mark the baseline with the correct angles. Okay, so now we're going to mark our baseline. And of course, we've got to start with zero degrees. And we've got to finish off with 360 degrees. That is one revolution of our cam. So, we're just going to go and count up in 20 degree intervals. 20, 40, going all the way up. And we're just going to write those in. It's quite small. I'm going to leave out the degree signs. And also try and do it slightly at an angle there. Just so you can see them. Okay, so that gets all of our degrees in, going from 0 through to 360 degrees. Okay, it's not the neatest, but just make sure that you can see exactly where each of your different degree points are. 
So that completes the start of your displacement diagram. Now we're going to move on to the question and have a look at the movement that's being given to us. Okay, so it says in that first bullet point there that for the first 80 degrees, the follower is at rest, which means the follower doesn't move up or down. So we're going to just have a straight line going from zero degrees to our 80 degree mark, which for me is over there. So from zero through to 80 degrees, I'm just going to go and make sure that I've got a nice dark line there to indicate that from zero to 80 degrees, my follower is at rest. Doesn't go up, doesn't go down. Now, the next bullet point in the question says to us that over the next 120 degrees, okay, let's check that first, next 120 degrees. So from 80, 120 degrees up takes us to 200. Okay, so that's our next point there. So lightly with a construction line, I'm just going to mark off that 200 there so you know that you're now going from 80 to 200 degrees. And then it, so it says over the next 120 degrees the follower rises with simple harmonic motion, and that's the motion that we're concentrating on for this video, to a height of 60 millimeters. Okay, so now we know that we're dealing with simple harmonic motion. So we're going to have a look at a set of eight steps which are going to help us draw out the simple harmonic motion. And step one over there is to note the size of the movement and block it off with construction lines. So the size of the movement is how, how long on the horizontal that movement is supposed to go, so for 120 degrees, and then how high, which they said in our question was supposed to be for a height of 60 millimeters there. So we're going to block that movement, and when we say we're going to block the movement, it means we are literally going to go and draw a block which indicates where the movement starts and stops in terms of the, the length along our horizontal, and then also how high our movement is supposed to go, which we said was a total of 60 millimeters. So, we're going to go and draw that in there. I just have to extend my lines a bit to make sure that my block is complete. So, that I've lightly blocked off my movement. Yeah, so there's my block, which indicates where I'm going to be doing this simple harmonic motion. Then, for step two, it says find the center point of one of the vertical sides of the block. Okay, so one of the vertical sides, we just pick a side and find its center point at 60 millimeters. So we can so just go mark that off. Okay, at 30 millimeters up. There's our center point. And we can mark it with a C so we can remember. And then in our next step, step three, it says that we must go and draw a semicircle on the side of this line using the found center point as its center. Okay, so semicircle using point C as the center point. So I'm going to go and draw in my semicircle. Okay, so there's my semicircle now. And that was now completing step number three. Okay, and now we're going to go for step number four. Create, so it's meant to break. That word's meant to be break. Break up the semicircle into the same number of parts as the base of the movement. Okay, so now we're going to check the base of the movement. How many parts is the base of the movement broken up into? So there's the base of the movement from 80 to 200 degrees. It's broken up into one, two, three, four, five, six parts. So now we've got to match the amount of parts okay, with the baseline. And we've got to go and break up our semicircle into six parts as well. And that's always the same with simple harmonic motion. Whatever we've broken up that baseline into, we're going to go break our semicircle up into the same amount of parts. Now with a semicircle, breaking up into six parts is quite nice and easy because breaking up into six parts means we're going to use our 30 and 60 degree set square to do that which will break our semicircle up into a nice set of, of even parts. So we're going to do that. 
six equal parts. Okay, there we go. There's our semicircle broken up into six equal parts. Okay, and that matches, remember that that matches how many parts the horizontal was broken up into. Okay, that is step number four done. Step number five, we're going to go and project these parts right across the block. Okay, so let's take each of those parts. We're going to project each of those parts right across the block. Okay, so we've done that. Then for step number six, we're going to project the parts of the base upwards across the block. We'll take each of our pieces of the base. Okay, and we're going to project those upwards across our block. So now you can see how nice and neatly our movement has been blocked out. We've broken up our semicircle into the same amounts of parts as what we have our horizontal. Okay, now to move on, go okay, to our step number seven. And step number seven there says, starting at the corner where the movement enters the block, mark points moving one line across and one line up till you reach the opposite corner of the block. So starting at the point where it enter, the movement enters the block, which is at that corner there, that's where we stopped at 80 degrees. So we're starting there, and we're going to mark points going one line across and one line up. Mark the point. One across, one up. One line across, one line up. One line across, one line up. One line across and one up. And one across and one up until we reach the opposite end of our block which tells us that that's where our motion is going to end and then if we move then to step number eight that's going to be to just go and join these points using a french curve to complete the movement okay so we're going to get our french curve out and we're going to go and use that to complete our movement okay so we're going to use our french curve now to go and join our dots to go and complete the movement of our curve okay Just make sure that you get that as accurate as possible with your French curve and as neatly as possible okay now that we've got our curve drawn in that has now completed our first part of our simple harmonic motion movement now if we go back to the question we'll see that we have to repeat the process because it now tells us that the follower is at rest for the next 40 degrees okay so that's quite simple we're going to go back here and for the next 40 degrees from 200 to 240 our follower is at rest which means that our follower simply goes in a straight line it doesn't move up doesn't move down so there's our where our follower will be at rest so we're going to just draw in a straight line here at the top for the part that it's at rest and then our question says that the over the final 120 degrees the follower returns with simple harmonic motion to its original position which means that we're now going back down with simple harmonic motion and it's over the same same length of movement so also 120 degrees so we're going to do the same set of steps we start off by blocking the motion we know that we're going from from 240 degrees to 360 degrees because that's our end we know that it's of course that it's starting from the same height over there so there's our block 
we need to go and find our center point for our circle but hey the circles are already there so we don't have to do it again and our parts are already there as well so and it's for the same height so we don't have to go and redo that all we're going to do is make sure that each of those parts are projected across that one's not very accurate but projected across and then we're also going to go and project each of our points off of our base we're going to project those up and across our block to create the same grid that we did with the last one and now we're going to do the same process we're also going to start with the point where our movement enters the block which is up here and we're going to go one part across and one down one part across 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 one down and the last time to end off the movement and then again go and find our french curve and we're going to go and french curve our movement to complete that simple harmonic motion again try and do that as neatly as you can as soon as you get to the center point you have to turn your french curve around okay because you now have your movement going the other way around it's got to change directions at that center point and then we can finish off that motion okay and there we have it so now we have our simple harmonic motion going up and our simple harmonic motion coming down but of course you can always just simply whenever you see simple harmonic motion in a question you can just go back to this simple set of eight points and follow them step by step to be able to go and complete your simple harmonic motion in a displacement diagram